Hi, I'm Pam Stegner. This is KCXL 1140 AM Radio Free Liberty. We're here every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 4 to 5 p.m. By the way, this is a pre-recorded show. Don't call us. This is not a call-in show today. This is pre-recorded. We are not live. My guest is A.G. Hawk, and we're talking about weapons of mass destruction. Before we get back to the weapons of mass destruction, A.G., let's tell people about the name of your book and how they can get it, maybe. Oh, certainly. You've just had a new book come out. I'm really excited to see it. Why, thank you, Pam. I'm a little bit excited myself. Yeah. Um, the, the book is called The Quick and Dirty Guide to Learning Foreign Languages Fast. It's kind of a long name, and basically one of the things I did while in Special Forces was uh, was rated in about seven languages. I kind of learned how to pick them up quickly and use them, and, and I developed a technique to uh, help teach others. So uh, some folks liked it at Paladin, and they decided to, uh, to publish it. And uh, for those that are interested, they can call 1-800-466-6868. Let's say that number again. Okay, 1-800-466-6868. And uh, just call Paladin Press and ask for the Quick and Dirty Guide to Learning Languages Fast by A.G. Hawk. Um, and uh, they have another 1-800 number, which is 392-2400. 392-2400. Mm -hmm. Or, of course, they can always go to their website, which is paladin-press.com. Paladin-press.com. Mm -hmm. How much is the book? It's 20 bucks, and it's uh, essentially a universal language guide. It's the kind of thing that you can buy and then use over and over. Uh, Excellent. But, but there's nothing else like it. And they've also asked me to uh, to write a book on Aikido, and I'm also working on a book uh, particularly related to this topic today is a Perennial Guide to Preparedness. Ooh, that'd be excellent. That'd be something I'd be interested in carrying. Well, I'll let you know as soon as it comes out. Excellent. I'll be looking forward to that. Um, let's go back to these teams that the National Guard is training. And mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the cities that are going to be getting these teams? Okay, that's a good question. Um, essentially, as I said, they have made an assessment on what they think would be likely terrorist targets. And they chose the top ten cities to be the first cities to receive these, uh, these Tiger teams or raid teams, uh, rapid assistance initial detection. Um, New York, of course, California, two, one in San Francisco and one in L.A., Colorado, Massachusetts, Texas, Missouri, Washington, Pennsylvania, Georgia, and Illinois. Where in Missouri? Kansas City? Oh, I imagine they're going to base them out of the capital so that they would have rapid access Jefferson to uh, City. Yeah. air assets so that they could, you know, get anywhere in the state that they might need to respond. Now, now this is RAID, R-A-I-D. I have been doing a little bit of following of RAID, and that mm -hmm. stands for Rapid Assessment. Initial Detection. Initial Detection. And, and I think that's probably why they wanted to get away from that, and you'll hear the term, uh, which is more politically correct, right now, which is WMD, CST, or Civil Support Team, because I think they found that the raid sounded a little too intimidating, so uh, they wanted to get away from that in you know, today's... Yeah, it does sound like they're, you know, literally a raid. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people were concerned about that, and, and I should probably take a quick moment and, and clarify that. A lot of people were concerned that, okay, these guys were going to be some type of counter-terrorist team, you know, responding yeah. to things and doing yeah. crazy things in the city, and that's not quite the case at all. Actually... They are simply technicians. It's the same as if you have a fire and then you have a fireman come and a fire inspector. These guys are the same type of thing. Their whole job is not to deal with the terrorists. You know, they, they leave that to the government and intelligence agencies. Their job is if something happens, let's get in there, let's make an assessment of what it is, and then figure out how we can go ahead and clean up and recover. Yeah. Now, yeah. some of the other states that are, are second on the uh, or second string for receiving teams are Alaska, Hawaii, Arizona, Arkansas, Idaho, Iowa, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maine, New Mexico, Ohio, Oklahoma, South Carolina, and Virginia. So those are the guys that are c currently getting their teams developed right now. I know uh, Florida and Minnesota, as well as California, are still in the process of assembling their teams right now. And some of the things that people should be aware of that, that they do so they understand um, if, if there's a fire or, say, if there's a chemical truck that's turned over on the highway or at a chemical plant, then you might see some folks in uniform, and it's not because it's something of military interest. It's more that these folks are trying to get their real-world training and experience by attending these events uh -huh. with, with the local uh, 
the local EMS and fire people. Uh-huh. But some of the things that uh, the National Guard will be involved in doing as well is they'll be providing engineers to clear debris, shelters for food, water, bulk items. There will be uh, mortuary affairs, which will be a, a very important one should something like this happen, and as well as access control, site security, um, and quarantine. And, and I think these are the things I bring these up for people to begin to to walk through the mental process. If something happens, how is it going to play out? Get a visual sight picture. If, if there were to be, let's say, for example, um, Minnesota, one of the big reasons why they're getting a rate team is they have the Mall of America. The Mall of America is oh, the largest yeah. mall in uh-huh. the world. Okay, That mall represents everything about American culture to most people outside the United States. Okay, So therefore, it becomes an ideal terrorist target. Now, it has the additional benefit of being literally a stone's throw away right across the highway from the international airport. So if, if a device were to be placed there, not only would you create chaos, but you would essentially handicap the entire state. All right? Uh-huh. And so when you take a scenario like that, like the Mall of America, for example, you got to also remember that is a major tourist attraction. So you're going to affect people not only in Minnesota, but all over the U.S., and in many cases, there are going to be some tourists from other countries as well. So everyone's going to be affected. Yeah, the psychological impact of that is astounding. Exactly my point. What people don't realize is if someone were to strike at some target like that, then what they do, in essence, is people then become reluctant to go in public, to go shopping, and the long-term effect Mm -hmm. over a few months could be a serious debilitation of the American economy. Wow. Now, once a situation like this occurs, can you imagine the typical bureaucratic over-response of the government would be to simply lock down everything, security Uh tightens everywhere, and most Americans, because of the shock of it, would simply relinquish their freedoms. Would would go along with it. Exactly. Trade, uh, you know, they get security and give up their freedoms. That's kind of like what happened in Germany. That's a very good point to bring out. You know, the whole concept here is to be prepared, be alert, but don't give up your freedoms. Don't let your congressman pass laws that take away all your rights. Yeah. You know, uh, we're still America. We're still the best game in town. And what makes us so great is what we're founded on, which was the principle of personal freedom. And, you know, that's what happens so quick. It's like after the Oklahoma City bombing, at, you know, just shortly after that, they uh, did the counter-terrorist legislation, which gave the FBI some very sweeping powers. By the way, the original legislation did not pass. But, you know, it was shortly after that we, that we saw all these concrete things in front of all these federal buildings now. Mm-hmm. And you, you can't exactly. even get near them with exactly. a car so anyway. It's, it's these types of things that I would really like to convey to your listeners to think about what would happen, what would be the long-term effects, and think about if the scenario played out. I mean, you have to realize there would be you know, your sons and daughters, okay, would, you know, the ones that serve in the National Guard would be the ones that would have to be reporting to duty to go and clear debris. There would be other MPs, you know, stationed on corners to provide security at certain key areas like power plants and the telephone companies as they try to uh, reinstate all the services. Um, there would certainly be some amount of quarantine. And I oh, think this I'm is sure. uh, yeah. a very underestimated concept. Most Americans don't fully appreciate what it would be like if someone all of a sudden came to them and said, guess what, you can't leave your home or you can't leave your neighborhood. Well, you know, we kind of seen an example of that in Seattle when they had the riots there with the World Trade Organization, Mm -hmm. and this is where they actually declared martial law in in a certain area. Mm -hmm. And do you remember the part where the people could not, it was illegal to buy and own and sell a gas mask? No, I, I... I don't think I tracked on that, but yeah, uh, they did. But I think my, I've heard of that. My my point being is that when when they do that, they become the law, and things change. Our constitutional rights are no longer applicable when they declare martial law. And it's true. If you're told not to leave your home, and it's under a quarantine situation, they can't leave. They're not going to leave. The roads are going to be taken control of, won't they? Exactly. And, and I try to look at it from, you know, the big picture. Okay, if I were in charge, I mean, what can you do? You just had a disaster happen. Um, 
you've got to contain it. And realistically, the only they don't have a choice. They'll have to quarantine. You know. Uh-huh. So I try to explain to people, hey, if this occurs, be mentally prepared to be quarantined. Have food and water in your house. Don't be put in a situation where you don't have it, and then all of a sudden you're forced to take desperate actions to try to get food and water, and then you put these uh, these young soldiers. Who you know their job is just hey keep the quarantine because as far as they know that's the only way to keep this thing under control and make things safe and now they've got desperate people doing desperate things and it's just a bad situation all the way around um, and another thing is like the mortuary affairs obviously the intention of a terrorist would be to harm a lot of people and yeah. apparently that would <clears throat> require the use of mortuary affairs there'd be a lot of people that are going to be wondering where the loved ones are, wanting to get down there to find out if, if uh-huh. their loved ones are there. And, yeah. you know, it, it, it's just such it's such a harsh scenario that we don't really want to even imagine it. Yeah. But the fact is there are nuclear, bi- biological, chemical weapons in our society. We have lost control of some of them. There are people that would like to use them against us. Um, our, our specialists, our men and women in the government have made an assessment that this is a real threat and they've begun to try to prepare for that so if they're trying to prepare for it then my my word to the average american citizen is pay attention and try and prepare yourself and your family as well well we cover preparedness issues on preparedness now and i'll just pause for a moment to uh, share with our listeners Jade Edwards, who's my nephew, does do NBC classes, you know, how to purchase a mask, how to use it, and all the mop gear and everything. And his name is Jade Edwards, and his phone number is 816-250-4899. That's 816-250-4899. Are there some other places people can go to, AG, to get information on how to protect themselves from NBCs with a gas mask and mop gear? Oh, absolutely. I mean, there are, there are uh, uh, a plethora of, of resources on the net where people can procure equipment and training. Um, none of my particular uh, associates do that as a specialty. Um, being in the Special Forces uh, branch, we tend to always be the guys that are on the far side of the fence, so we're looking at it like we never really focus on NBC training because they're not going to use it on themselves. And there's no way we could supply enough for all the local people. Oh, so yeah. We're in the same boat as they are, so uh, yeah. we tend to uh, <laughs> shy away from that. Um, however, there are, there are plenty of people on the net, and, and I encourage everyone. Uh, it to, seems like there was a really good class that FEMA was doing, too. Uh, someone FEMA. sent me something about it, like, last winter. Yeah, I, I can't remember the name of it, but they might want to, like, go to FEMA's website. I'm not sure what that is, but I'm, they could do a search engine. I think it's just FEMA.gov. But, uh, yeah, absolutely, FEMA offers a lot of very outstanding programs and training for people. A lot of them are actually downloadable off their website. Uh And um, I find it very interesting that only in the last two or three years that all of a sudden quite a bit of uh, free classes to most anyone have have become available through FEMA. Primarily in the past it was limited to people that specialized in EMS and that type of Uh thing. Uh, incident responders, etc. But uh, now they've become much more uh, freewheeling with giving out their training to pretty much anyone that's interested. So hey, we've got a, another break here. We'll okay. be back in just a couple of minutes with A.G. Hawk. I'm Pam Stegner. This is KCXL 1140 AM. Be right back. Don't touch that dial. back. I'm Pan Stigner, and this is KCXL 1140 AM and AG, that quote and what uh, 
that was, by the way, that came out of the Mel Gibson movie, uh, Braveheart, and that was for you, A.G. Well, I thank you, love. It's certainly one of my most favorite movies. <laughs> really glad you're here. Appreciate it. Hey, everybody out there, I take the Supervite. They are wonderful vitamins, and thanks to everyone that's going down to Joe to Tony's uh, store, the Supernatural Health Food Center, and buying these vitamins. They are wonderful. I also take his uh, growth hormone. That's the Super Youth GH, and it doesn't put any weird hormones or anything like that in your body, but it causes your body to make its own growth hormone. It's an anti-aging product, and since I have been taking this, I feel a lot better. I don't get that brain fog in the afternoon at all. It's completely gone. I sleep better at night, and I've noticed my skin has gotten smoother, especially on the backs of my hands. I just feel a lot better, and that growth hormone is called Super Youth GH. It's only $51.98 for five weeks. A comparable product is about 80 bucks for four weeks, and if you mention my name, Pam Stegner, Joe will give you a free sample. Write this number down. That's 816-765-1135. If you're out of the Kansas City area, call 1-800-POWER-21. That's 1-800-POWER-21, and he does mail orders, so check him out. Be sure and tell him that I sent you. A.G., we are um, talking about uh, some pretty heavy stuff here. But, you know, I'm a kind of a survival preparedness now person. Matter of fact, I'm very into it. And I've got plans of booking out of the city. I'm not staying here. I'm going to hop in my four-wheel drive and head to the country. Um, what do you recommend about doing that? Am I going to make it out of town? Is there going to be roadblocks? What's, what's there going to be? Uh, well, that's, that's an interesting one, and um, it has a lot to do with uh, what, I, what I wrote about in my book, uh, Psychology of Perennial Preparedness. Um, essentially, my book does not go into all the details of how to make food, how to procure food, all the different ways to purify water. I just touch on each one of the subjects just to give enough basic information to encourage people to take and expand on each one of those topics by getting a couple of other books so that they can round out their knowledge of uh, all the things that one needs in order to, to successfully survive in any type of situation. And it, particularly in, in the one of what you know we call and consider escape and evasion, uh, it's a very important question because realistically, unless you're well-tuned with what's going on, most people will find that the walls will come down or go up, rather, before they can actually make their exodus from the from the major uh, metropolitan areas. So what I encourage people to do is, first of all, foremost, pay attention, read the signs. If you see the writing on the wall, then go ahead and make your moves early on. If you find that you're stuck, trapped in the circle, um, I know what I do for myself is uh, I know I have topographical maps, camping maps of every place all around where I reside. And what I do is make sure that I know a couple of foot routes that I can walk or ride a bike anywhere that I need to go in order to get out. Um, most people aren't willing to go that distance. Most people aren't familiar or comfortable with taking that sort of perceived drastic action. Um, but, you know, I perceive the ability to be able to, to be free and to get mobile to be worth it to me. So I'll, I'll take those measures. But the big thing is know your environment. Have a What we always operate off is a five-point plan, a primary alternate, contingency, emergency, and then what we call a GTS, or go-to blank plan. So you should always Let's say have those five again. Primary. Alternate, contingency, emergency, and then a, a GTS plan, or GTH, go to hell plan. So, uh, <laughs> you know, the point is that... If you you're down to that fifth one, I think it's going to be a GHP. <laughs> Well, uh, bottom line is everyone should have a number of places that they can go. Um, they should have always walked or driven or ridden their bikes on their planned routes before they ever needed it, you know. And the other thing is, in, in relation to that, is it's really good to have a network of friends and family. And I hate to kind of break it down like this, but when it all comes down to it, when you're talking about this, this type of scenario, people need to develop their own networks and they need to figure out where they categorize their friends as and their family as far as how far they can trust them, under what circumstances would their friends and family be able to keep their cool, or maybe, you know, if the situation became too stressful, they might not be a good location to go to 
And so you kind of have to make an assessment of who you know, where you can go, and prioritize, categorize which level of scenario would would be propitious for you to go to those particular people. So yeah. that you have you know, a network where you can go and also people that you can talk to or seek help from. At Preparedness Now, I, I have a website. It's under construction. I've <laughs> been there for months. I do have a webmaster who's working on it. But Preparedness Now has developed five areas of preparedness. The first area is shelter, water, and food. The second is medical, and that involves the down and dirty save your life and long term. The third area is uh, involves self-defense, which is firearms and NBCs. The fourth area is communications, and that involves all levels of it as in aspects of communications and powering them without electricity. Then the fifth area is networking, and you really address that well with this categorizing uh, people and people who you can trust and family and friends and how you deal with that. Really thank you for saying that because that is really crucial. It's actually probably the most important thing because at the end of the day, I mean, you can feed yourself and, and get your water and take care of your first aid, but, you know, no man is an island. We all live in a society. We are going to have to deal with people. That's and it right. Is the interaction with the people that is going to be the most critical portion of any type of these scenarios, no matter how they play out. So that fifth element is actually the most important, and people should pay particular attention to that. Well, I'd like you to address this because I hear this from people all the time. Uh, they want to get survival land or get their survival stuff together, and they don't want anybody to know about it. They just want to be real secretive about it. And I kind of have concerns about that because we're going to need each other in a day of disaster. I ha do you feel if someone's buying survival land that they should or shouldn't tell anybody about it? And I mean that in terms of classifying it like that you talked about it. Well, I would say, you know, it's, it's, it's like this. You have to figure out in which circles you run and, and what are the friends and company that you keep. Uh, if you have the type of friends and family that you don't feel that you can trust to, to share certain information with, then, you know, I suggest you find a new set of friends. Um, however, I, I, to, to give a better answer, I would say that most people should figure out who the family members are that are dependable and trustworthy and can keep a secret and tell those people, because you never know, you might not come out of it. And it would be a crying shame to have some of your friends or loved ones not have access to something yeah. that you can't use simply because you never trusted them enough to share. Yeah, and, good point. And what I suggest is you don't have to tell everything. Just tell some things. Yeah. And don't tell all things to all people. Just tell some things to different people so not any one person that you give an information has all the information. Excellent. A kind of a little thing I go by uh, about a secret you know, is is it something that I really want to burden someone with? Is it something they really can keep? You know, do I really want to do that to them? <laughs> but yeah, you don't. You wouldn't tell everybody everything. Just parts of that. Exactly. That makes sense. It, it's being. It's using wisdom, is what you're talking about, Ag. Exactly. But it's using wisdom with a plan. It's being prepared ahead of time. It's not just waiting for something to happen and going. Oh, what am I going to do? It's going to be too late to try to figure it out in a day of disaster. Well, exactly, and, and, and it's a very unfortunate observation that I've made, but we as humans tend to only learn from painful experiences, and unfortunately we also only seem to really shine and grow close together when circumstances are dire. And so... What I suggest for everyone is to remember that, hey, we're all in this together, and if something like this comes down, uh, there's no one out there that's really an enemy. It's not, you know, Uncle Sam isn't the enemy. He's just trying to do his job to fix something, and, and all your, your fellow citizens out there, they aren't the enemy either. They're simply people that have been placed in a desperate situation, and they're taking desperate measures. So uh, the, the key to remember is we're in it together, and we're going to get through it together, and everything that you do you're going to have to live with. So, you know, conduct yourself with, with honor and integrity in, in all that you do. And don't let a bad situation make you choose bad courses of action. Well, I really appreciate this time. We're going to have to wrap this up. I want to tell people how to get your book, Quick and Dirty Guide to Learning Languages Fast, and that is through Paladin Press. They can find that on the web at paladin-press.com. And your phone numbers again to order that from? 1-800-466-6868.
or 1-800-392-2400. Yeah, well, and that book's 20 bucks, right? Yep. Hey, thanks for writing it. I'm going to look forward to getting it. Uh, AG, thanks for being with us today. Really appreciate it. We'd love to have you back and do some medical stuff. I'd like that very much, and thank you to all your listeners. Hey, blessings, and God bless America. It had to start sometime. What better place than here? What better time than now?